CSGO. Hey guys, been a while, hasn't it? Before this video begins, some housekeeping. If you want to go ahead and skip, there's going to be timestamps. In the months that I was away, CSGO released two major updates, first being the Rio Major, and the second being the removal of Dust 2 from the active duty pool and some map rotation in the active duty pool. Really nothing too crazy, nothing too major, pun intended. My Discord server, which if you haven't joined, you definitely should, became obsessed with the Netflix original series Wednesday, which blossomed a very interesting relationship. But besides from that, there was really no other major developments. So that brings us to this video, which is just kind of a general lookout for these investments video, kind of a recap of what we missed and stuff like that. So I thank you all for clicking on this video and choosing to spend a piece of your day with me. Let's get a word from the sponsor and then we will go ahead and start this video off. The sponsor for today's video is GamerPay, the official skin trading website of the ninjas in pajamas. Apart from supporting my beloved Brolins, GamerPay has a lot of great features on their site. As you're scrolling through the site, every skin is on display in a very readable fashion. You can see the stickers the skin has, you can see case hardened patterns. One of the best things about the site is when you actually go to purchase one of the skins, you can see a lot more details that you normally wouldn't be able to see on a lot of other websites, like an overview of the seller and their join date on Steam and all of that important information. On top of that, you can also see the fees that you're going to be incurring right there. There's nothing hidden to you at all. GamerPay is extremely transparent with their fee structure. After you pick up the skin that you want, the trade will automatically be filled out using your API key and sent to the person that will then have to accept it. Now, if you're interested in selling your skins on GamerPay, that is also really easy to do, and they give you a nice overview of all of the statistics for your inventory, what they'll pay you, stuff like that. Now, a revolutionary feature of this site that I was really surprised to see myself was you can actually view any skins that you're looking to purchase in 3D. Complete with inspect animation, firing animation, everything you can really think of. Anyone who sells on GamerPay can get their own 3D store that anyone can go into and view all of the skins they have available for sale. It even works with knives and gloves. I think this aspect of the site really shows how much GamerPay cares about the buyer and seller. They've clearly put a lot of detail and design into making this website a great experience for either of those two parties. You can see even more of this detail orientation if you go into your profile page on the website site. You can choose the currency that you view the site in. You can choose if you want to see buff price comparisons. You can even go as far to customize the fee that you see when you deposit, which by the way are very reasonable fees. It's only 2.5% if you use your wallet or 5% if you use your card. GamerPay has a wide array of trusted partners and a really great website that was clearly built with love. So if you want to go ahead and check them out, be sure to use the link in the description below to support me. Thanks. All right, so to generically wrap up the investments that we kind of missed or stuff that you might want to look out for, we're going to go ahead and start off by looking at the Dust 2 souvenir package. This has been sort of a hot topic recently because Dust 2 is actually being removed from the active duty pool. Now, it is important to realize that that does not mean Dust 2 is not available for competitive play. Both Anubis and Dust 2 are still available for competitive play, but Dust 2 was removed from the active duty pool, so it's unlikely that we're going to have any more souvenir Dust 2 packages for quite a while. So the Dust 2 souvenir package actually shot up in value after this update was announced, and we actually saw a huge spike on the graph, as you can see here. It did level out, however, after people were buying more of the in-game packages, and then after the 7-day market hold expired, they went ahead and dumped them onto the market, and the price went back down to about what it was before the spike. However, as the package is no longer really going to be available in future majors, it's probably a pretty solid thing to hold on to long term at this point. If you bought into them when the price spike was happening, then just keep holding on to them, I would say. Dust 2 was already played not very much at all in the previous Rio major, with only a couple matches actually taking place on it, and it's really safe to say in the future we probably won't see more of these souvenir packages for the time being. So both the Dust 2 souvenir package and some of the skins from the all-new Dust 2 collection will probably be good pickups. The second thing that I wanted to focus on here was Broken Fang Operation Collection skins, particularly from the Havoc Collection and the Control Collection. The Ancient Collection is being passed over here because the Ancient Collection is actually available in souvenir packages, and there are quite a few matches being played on Ancient as well in Rio, and in the future, Ancient will probably be a pretty popular map in Majors as well. So for that reason, there's going to still be a lot of influx of the Ancient skins in souvenir form to the market. Therefore, sticking to focusing on Havoc and Control Collections is a better idea 
as those maps are not available for major play. Now the reason I wanted to highlight these is because if you look back at Operation Shattered Web, all of those skins are just ridiculously expensive now. Gungnirs are one of the most expensive items in the entire game. The purples are going for like a minimum of $200, which is absolutely ridiculous, considering I said to buy into them when they were like $8 a piece. Pretty crazy to see where that investment went. Although Shattered Web was quite a while before Broken Fang, and likely had a fair bit less investment overall into those collections as Broken Fang did, I'd still say it's a good idea to keep your eye on Control and Havoc, at least for the time being, because they are still sitting around pretty similar prices to what they were when the operation dropped, so there is a potential chance for some growth there. With the Control collection specifically, there's actually a lot of really good looking skins in there as well, like the 5-7 Berries and Cherries and the M4A1S Blue Phosphor. Those are both very, very nice skins, especially the Blue Phosphor. And the Havoc collection features the Op Silk Tiger, which is sort of at this point a cult classic item. There's definitely a lot of people that like the item a lot. And the only other skin that I would kind of spotlight is the Phoenix Blacklight. I think that one's pretty cool, and it's a good looking Galil skin. Something to look out for if you're interested in that, but I'm sure many people will be skeptical on those items. But the skepticism is what helped Shattered Web go up, so keep that in mind. Another sort of interesting development, Antwerp 2022 Legends capsules are actually above the price point that you'd buy them for in-game at this point. So if you invested in those, congrats on your two cents profit per capsule so far. But jokes aside, this is actually a pretty interesting topic to talk about because with RMR capsules performing the way that they did, for example, there were a lot of people skeptical on Antwerp 2022, and their prices have remained fairly low compared to how Stockholm 2021 performed. However, taking a look at the Antwerp 2022 Legends capsule, we can see that it has actually made some positive price movement. It is still a very recent major for sure, so I think there is actually some growth here, and maybe you want to give Antwerp a second glance over. There could be some opportunities to make a few dollar bills on those capsules, but many people have been burned by RMR before, so if you're a little bit too skeptical for Antwerp 2022 capsules, then that's completely understandable. Maybe just something to watch. On the topic of sticker investing, I did release a part one video for all of the major stickers and which ones are decent to look into for investments, and you may have noticed that part two has not come out yet. This is due to a few different things, but one of the major ones is that we still don't have the Rio major sale, and although I don't think it'll affect much because Rio seems to be a fairly unpopular set of stickers, I want to go ahead and wait for that to get all of the information for Rio. It was just a bit of bad timing with how I wanted part two to come out, but still on the topic of stickers, I do think in terms of investing, the ones that I would watch the most are Atlanta 2017 and Boston 2018. These are both fairly popular sets of stickers that a lot of people are really into. I think there's a lot of opportunity here. I think there's still a lot of opportunity here for both of these majors to do really, really well over time. If you're into those sets of stickers, which I'm sure many of you are, as they are pretty nice looking stickers overall, that may be one to buy into. I joke about Flash Gaming Hollows from time to time in my Discord server, but Flash Gaming Hollows are a really cool item. They have a great design that resembles both Furia and I by Power, which as we know is a quite popular thing for a lot of investors. The Flash Gaming Boston stickers may be one to specifically watch out for, as I'm fairly unsure that team will ever see a comeback. Those stickers still definitely remain in the lower echelon of price points, despite how good they look, so definitely one to watch. And the final thing that I wanted to talk about is Flip Knives. I made an entire video on Flip Knives in the past, and recently they have seen some pretty insane price spikes that many people kind of consider to come out of nowhere. And those people would pretty much be right because this kind of did just come out of nowhere. Flip Knives randomly shot up quite a lot over the past month. Raw has also outlined this on his Twitter account. Shout out to Raw, really cool guy. And although it's a bit cynical, you may have already missed the boat on the Flip Knives. When it comes to knives shooting up in price, they kind of just tend to shoot up, level out at that price, and then in the future, have another spike at some point. This has been shown historically with other flip knife price spikes as well. They don't usually come back down after the price spike, and they don't usually go up even more after the price spike either. It's a little rare for that to happen, so the best overall thing we can take from this flip knife price spike is that knives are always a decent thing to hold on to. They're very, very slow moving, but they're also quite safe. It seems like they almost virtually never go down. So if you're a slow burn investor. Those are definitely something to watch. And speaking of slow burn, another thing you might want to watch is the viewer passes from Antwerp 2022 and even Rio. These still both remain at price points very similar to their original sale price in the CSGO store. So if you want something slow but fairly guaranteed for profit, those are ones to watch. And with that, that's going to bring us to the end of this little recap. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you like this kind of video format, let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video and want to help me push out onto the algorithm after this nice little three-month break, 
then go ahead and drop a like on the video. That does help a lot, and it costs you absolutely nothing. Also, be sure to click that subscribe button because I am going to definitely make an effort to make more investment videos. And we know how that's gone in the past. Not something you really want to miss. And if you want to go ahead and talk about how hot Jenna Ortega is, then be sure to check out my Discord server in the description below. I also have a Twitter account where I post some hilarious CSGO memes and occasionally investing advice here and there. So that's something to check out as well. And finally, GamerPay, the leading CSGO third-party marketplace at the moment, will also be linked below. Using my link will help me out quite a lot, and it will support GamerPay, which is a stellar company. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time. Peace.